I'm going to show you how to add a thermal pad to a Dell Inspiron N5110. So here's my Dell laptop, nothing special. And I just have a few tools that I'm going to need to do this. So I have a precision screwdriver. I have a regular screwdriver with a magnetic bit. And I have some small tweezers, which we might or might not need. And of course, our silicone thermal pad. Now you can use um, thermal grease, which comes in something like that. I personally don't prefer it, only because it's very messy and doesn't last as long. So we're going to take the battery out. Just set that off to the side. And the next part, this is important, we want to make sure we do this. We're going to open it up and you're going to push the power button for about 10 seconds or so. You just want to drain out any excess electricity that might be running through the circuit board. That's what creates the electric shock. And that can uh, definitely fry out your motherboard or the hard drive. So just go ahead and take out all the screws. Took off the door panel there for the RAM. And uh, as we get to the end here, there is one spot that it's a little deeper. So you're going to need a precision screwdriver to get in there. So I just have this little thing because it's not very tight. So I'm just going to take that out. And then I'm just going to use my magnetic bit here to just pull it out. So there we have it. So all our screws are out. And you want to make sure you put them in a place that you're not going to lose them either. So put all your pieces off to the side. Now we're going to take out the keyboard. So to do that, I just have a flat bit on the uh, little screwdriver here. Just going to stick it in between. You should just hear it pop there. So just going to put your finger under there. And then what you want to do is you just want to push down and pull up at the same time. So this should just make it snap out really easy. So then it's connected to the motherboard, so the little black piece, just flip it up and then slide the ribbon out. So now we're going to remove the four screws that are holding this in. Again, we're going to remove these three ribbons that are in here. So just push those black pieces up and you're just going to pull out each ribbon one at a time. So by removing the screws on the top case, we're able to remove the um, CD drive here. So you just go ahead and pull that out. And then what we're going to do is take off the top case. So you just want to stick your fingers inside where the drive was. And we're just going to separate. There should be like a little edge. And just going to use a little pressure to push it up. You'll hear it. There you go. It starts to pop out. So this should just snap right out. Just like that. You don't need it. We're going to set it off to the side. And there we have our motherboard. So that's the part we're getting to. So before we do anything else, we're going to remove our wireless card. And we're also going to detach our LCD panel. So just undo that black ribbon undo our fan here. We want to take off the sound card right here. It just pops out. Again, set it off to the side where you're not going to lose it. And then we're going to pull out the speaker plug. And now we're all set to start taking our other pieces out. So just unscrew the wireless card here. You should only have one screw. It has a very small screw, so be careful with that. You don't lose it. It is much smaller than the rest of them. So you're just going to lift it up and it should just slide out. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the LCD panel. So there are four screws holding this in. When you get to the last one, make sure you hold the panel as you unscrew it. You don't want to drop it and crack it or hurt it in any way because that's a very important part. So once you're done that, you're just going to carefully lift that out. There we go, and then just set it off to the side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start unscrewing our motherboard. So there are five or six screws depending on 
the kind of motherboard you have. So you don't have to unscrew the second board on the side there, just the main board here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So with that out, now you can see right here there's a little white uh, piece there and it's connected to the bottom board. You're going to have to separate that because it won't come out in one piece. And there's also another piece up in the top corner. So right here you want to stick your fingers under there. You're going to have to use a little pressure to kind of pull it apart. There you go. And then the rest should just kind of come right out. Perfect. So set that off to the side. There's our motherboard, flip it over, and this is what we're trying to get to. So you can see there's the hard drive and the RAM. And if we turn it around, you can see here is our heatsink, our processors under there, and then we have our fan. So you want to make sure you clean out your fan as well. This one's already clean because I already replaced the hard drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew the heatsink. Just carefully lift that off. Oh, gross. Okay. So if you can see that, this is the thermal grease that was already on there. And it is, like, caked on there. It is, like, super thick and stuck. I'm probably going to have to scrape that out a little bit. And same with the processor. You can see it's actually around the pad on the processor. It's not even on it. So that's probably what was causing it to overheat that with the hard drive change was causing it to be overworked. So we're going to go ahead and clean this off. You want some alcohol and just a q-tip and maybe some Kleenex. Nothing special. Alcohol works the best because it also dries quickly. So just put a little bit off to the side here and we're just going to go ahead and clean this all out. Hopefully it comes off with this. So just make sure it's nice and shiny, get it all off, beautiful. So now we're going to go ahead and do the heat sink. Just got to scrape it out. Okay, looking good. So I'm just going to give it a quick dry. And you can see here on the side, there's this little silicone piece that was already there. It's actually got holes in it. I'm not sure why, but if you peel it, it's really flimsy and degraded, so that's no good. We're going to have to replace that too. So we're just going to take our pad here. I'll show you it's one millimeter pad that I have. I can get in half millimeter. I prefer the one millimeter because it creates a little bit more of a space. And then it's just got a film on both sides. You can see that you're just going to pull it up when you put it on. So it doesn't matter, both sides will stick. It doesn't matter which way is up or down. So we're just going to go ahead and cut the size that we need. I cut a size just big enough to fit on top of the pad on the processor. So you can go ahead and place that on top. And you're just going to pull off the other piece on top. Set that out to the side. Make sure you remove all the plastic. And then we're going to add a new piece of silicone to our <laughs> our little uh, thing here. Just gonna go ahead and place that on, and that goes on top of the video card. Okay, so that's all set. So everything's all ready to go. We're just gonna go ahead and put that back on. Now, when you put this back on, make sure you put your wire through the hole here for the fan. Uh, otherwise, if you end up screwing it on, it'll get stuck in there. You don't want that. So you just want to line up all the screw holes just very carefully. And for this, you're also going to have to use a little bit of pressure because these are pressure screws. So you just want to push it in, and then we're going to screw this back on. Perfect. So it's back together like it never happened. So then I'll show you just in the side here. You can see there's just a little gap in between the processor and the heatsink, which is what you want. Personally, thermal pads work way better. Um, and so there's your wire, and you're all set. So now we just gotta put it back together. So you're gonna flip your motherboard back over, 
put it back in the same way you took it out. It can only go in one way. So we're just going to line that back up. And remember you have to line it up on those notches that were on the other board. So it should just sit in. And you can see here on the side, what you're going to have to do is just put a little bit of pressure down, make sure it's lined up, and it should just push right back on. So with that back on, we're just going to screw our motherboard back in. Now we're going to plug our fan back in. We're going to plug our speakers back in. We are going to put our sound card back on. It can all go in one way. So I have the little hole just facing towards the outside. It should just push right on, just like that. Putting our LCD back on. We're going to put the wireless card back in, just kind of on an angle, and then push down. And we're just going to screw that back on. We're going to plug the LCD back in, that little black ribbon that we pulled out earlier. Let's push it back. There we go. And you want to make sure that you're able to get the ribbon out if you ever have to take it apart again. That one's kind of stuck, so there, yeah, the tweezers came in handy. Just kind of push that out. Perfect. Put it all back together. There we go. Everything is back together. Just screw on the base. Okay, put our battery back in. And then I give it the ceremonial shake. Make sure that there's nothing loose in there. I didn't miss anything. Open it up. Turn it on. We have power. So that means I guess I put it back together correctly. So I'll let you have a look here and see that it's working. And it actually boots up pretty quick now. You see the fan's starting to blow. Oh yeah, nice cool air. That feels really good. So that should last quite a while. So we're gonna go ahead and just turn it on. And there you go. It's working. So that's it. Thank you for watching and remember silicone is better than the grease.